Hi, Dr. Miller. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, I understand we're gonna, you're going to talk about a, a new um, something in children's dentistry? Absolutely. I hope to cover a few topics today, but one of them I want to share with your audience is, um, you know, as we know, there's a lot of healthcare technology is changing the, the, the whole healthcare spectrum. And dental health care and oral health, something that's new on the horizon is um, a new antibacterial liquid that can be applied to early cavities to really stop their progress. That liquid is called silver dimine fluoride. And essentially, I think it's important to know it's not a panacea. And it's not really de designed for permanent definitive care. It really allows, in certain situations, allows us to buy time and stop the progress of the cavity. For example, in my situation, a pediatric, pa pediatric dentist, uh, young patients, that may not be the opportune time from a behavioral perspective to treat that problem. That may be an option for me to allow me to delay treatment until they're a bit older and, um, and successfully treat it permanently. The one area I think it's important for the audience to know is that um, there is, it does cause that area of the, that cavity when it's treated to turn black. So there are some negative cosmetic effects that can be corrected later as that final treatment is performed. It's, that's amazing because my, um, one of my grandsons just had that procedure done yesterday. Fantastic. Well, I, it, it's really a nice tool to have. Um, it really is. It, yeah, it was, we were kind of wondering because um, he's two. And he has a couple cavities, which he shouldn't, but he does, unfortunately. And um, we we were kind of wondering how long, I mean, will this hold it off until that tooth falls out when he's seven or eight years old? Or um, would they, tr it just, uh, from my understanding, as you said, it stops the bacteria and the cavity from growing. So in theory, he wouldn't, it wouldn't become painful or abscessed, right? I mean, that... Um, Th will that, it hold it off until that tooth falls out, or will he need treatment, say, when he's five? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and, and really, our goal is, is to stop the progress of the cavity. Now, any broken down tooth structure will still be there. Um, and so, in most circumstances, that tooth will need to be treated with a final permanent filling. Um, because uh, uh, being able to restore it back to its complete normal function. Uh, but, the, you know, your grandson being age two, in my particular experience in my practice, that's a really, uh, the, you know, a very common age that I've utilized this uh, new tool because many, many two-year-olds aren't really ready to have permanent treatment done. So it has allowed me an option to delay treatment and, you know, Perhaps at three and a half to four, I can now treat that. And uh, baby teeth, there are many baby teeth that aren't lost till that child's 12 or 13. So again, it, well, there's many factors that need to take into account, but uh, Carmina, usually permanent treatment will eventually need to occur in your grandson. Oh, well, hopefully he'll be able to sit for it. Right now, it's kind of a, it's kind of a battle. I, I understand, <laughs> and, and that's why I use it too. Cool. I'm just really tickled to hear that we have it here in Hawaii, too, because normally we always seem like we're delayed in the new stuff, but um, their pediatric dentist was able to do it, and, and that's just great. Well, well, we're glad you had us, and, and I think uh, hey, I'd be, do a, be happy to do a personal interview over in Hawaii if you'd like to have me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, coming from um, Georgia, I guess it's pretty cold right that right now, right? Yeah, actually, I'm further west. I'm in. I'm talking to you from Reno, Nevada, right now. But it's cold. Oh, okay. It's cold. Okay. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Well, we think it's cold. It's like 65, <laughs> and we're we're like all bundled up. And Don't, rub so. <laughs> Don't rub it in. Don't rub it in. But are there any new um, things that we need to, I mean, I've got a lot of grandkids. Thankfully, only one of them has a cavity. We've managed to um, 
trying to keep everybody else cavity free so far. Sure. Not wood. Sure. Yeah. Let me kind of perhaps touch on a top couple of areas that we see increased cavity risk, particularly in that younger population, that you know, infant and very young child. And there's uh, something that you you may have heard the term baby bottle cavities or nursing bottle decay. That's a, a situation where a very young, an infant or a young child is put to bed at night with a nursing bottle uh, that has basically anything other than water, milk, formula, juice. They're put to bed at night with that. And that child may uh, sip or nurse on that, that liquid all through the night, on and off. So that gives an opportunity for many hours for those cavity-causing bacteria to really wreak havoc in that child's mouth. So again, what we want to really uh, make parents aware of is that, you know, in your in your feeding practices, feed your child before they go to bed. Try to have them consume, you know, a nice full meal uh, so that they can sleep longer through the night, and really avoid putting them to bed at night with a bottle. Uh, with anything else other than water. The other area would be in that teenage and young and the older child group with increased consumption of uh, soda pop, uh, carbonated beverages, sports drinks, sour candies. Uh, Now we have a double whammy effect where not only are we having at risk the cavities from the sugar, but we are weakening the tooth structure with the acid that's present in those different beverages and, and candies that even make the cavity process even much more aggressive. So those are two nutritional things or feeding patterns or snacking patterns I want to talk about. But I think the most important thing to know is that is the frequency of the consumption of any sweets, beverages, or um, fermentable carbohydrates. And what I mean by frequency is it's not necessarily how much you consume at one time that's most cavity damaging. It's how frequent you can, how frequently you consume it. So you're far better off if I had a soda to drink it all at one sitting rather than sipping on it for three or four hours throughout the day. It's frequency is the highest. The more frequent, the higher the damage. I got sort of like the Halloween candy thing. Have right. them eat it all one night toss it versus spreading it out over the next two weeks. You're exactly right. Yep. Yeah. I know. It, it just, um, I mean, having raised my kids, they unfortunately had cavities too, but mostly when they were older. And now the grandkids are coming along and um, it, it, that we know how oral hygiene is definitely very important, but honestly, try brushing a one and a half, two-year-old it's just, it's a challenge. It is. Carmina, like you, I'm a dad and I'm also a grandpa. I'm a papa as well. So um, I brush my grandkids' teeth uh, uh, and, and I wear my dad hat as well. So I can appreciate the challenges. But uh, I think the key is stay with it. Uh, be committed. It's a partnership with you and your child. And, you know, as you continue to show that that's important and that you're going to be brushing and caring for their teeth, you're instilling some very good habits for that child for their lifetime. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for answering my question. I mean, that was really like the, the silver, what is it called again? Silver? Silver diamine fluoride. Diamine silver fluoride. Silver diamine fluoride. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, was, um, that was my main concern. I thought, wow, cool. It, it just seemed like this interview came at a very opportune time, Yeah, you know, but I, I appreciate it. And um, I'll let you go. I know you have other interviews and um, maybe we'll talk to you again sometime in Hawaii. Hey, there you go. And Carmine, if I can give you just one last, um, one little plug for our website, AAPD's website, mychildrensteeth.org. That's a great resource for your your audience to go to for great information for parents and fun, interactive things for kids. So that's the go-to place. Mychildrensteeth.com. Dot org. Or is it? Mychildrensteeth.org. Yep. All righty. We'll do that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carmina.